Hey, that's my third meal of the day. First meal was McDonald's sausage, egg, and cheese biscuit. Bought two. I bought two. But he's like, you know what? One's enough. And I even took half the bread off the bottom. You know? So I had a full piece of bread, a half piece of bread from yeah. the biscuit. And then the whole biscuit. I did add grape jelly though. I mean strawberry. That shit is high carbs. I can't have the biscuit without the strawberry jelly. And then I had some baked CD with the garlic knot and some fruit. Then I came home, as you saw. And I had some bacon and eggs. Now, we're about to go to the gym. All right, you know what the key? The key to successful pre-workout is using code Aftermath, 40% off my protein. Second off, it's taking the, the, the damn pre-workout right before you get in the car. <coughs> Now, if it takes you more than 30 minutes to get to the gym, I am, my condolences, I am deeply sorry. There is no way you will catch me traveling for my main gym. Like, if I'd like to meet somebody for like a video or something, cool. But uh, my main gym on the daily, bro, I, and I bet you there's a lot of y'all, you comment below, There's a, I bet you there's a, a, a good amount of y'all that travel more than 30 minutes, or at least 30 minutes flat to get to the gym. Go, 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 flip flops. Yeah. Fucking hit your bitch in my socks. Yeah. It's right, uh, uh, ah, ah. These hurt, cause they meant to see. I'm a baddie baby, man. Baddie baby. You see, you get a bill on OnlyFans for six, six hours. Six hours. Yeah, that's why I was like, "Yo, when are we gonna start?" But you over here bullshitting. I don't want no OnlyFans. I don't give a fuck. I don't give I'll a make a meal my own give a way. Fuck. I'll make a meal and make more meals after that meal. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. I let my mom know in advance. I'd rather break your heart than she find out. So you look good. I look good. Yeah. Let's see that. What you got? What you working with? What you working with? I see. Yeah. Get that. Uh. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Yeah. You trying to get skinny again? They even got me fat all last year. I got you fat like two years ago. A year and a half ago. Yeah. It's taking a while to come off. It took for us to get sick to get skinny again. <laughs> we had to get sick. But I'm not like, I lost weight, but I ain't like. You're not tight. I'm not tight either, but you're smaller. That's the starting point. Honestly, practice today felt good. I was yeah. like, damn. This is, I'm moving yeah, around like weight off. I'm moving around pretty. Moving around pretty fucking easy today. So I'm like, alright. Did anybody comment on it? Uh, no. Okay. Not really. Uh, I mean, when I chase, this guy didn't chase, he was like, uh, he, he was like, you look small, you look good though. And I'm like, alright. I'm still the strongest in the weight room. It don't matter. Me. Me. What up, YouTube? It's your boy, MB Math. Thank you guys for tuning into the next video of today, which I need to ask you guys to like this video, subscribe to the channel. If you have been enjoying it so far, a little vlog beforehand. Uh, but right now, I am uh, pretty much getting ready for a surgery. I get knee surgery in about a week from now. So my rugby um, season right now is pretty much done with until later this year where we will be heading to um, Wales. We'll be heading to Wales and we'll also be heading to South Africa. Um, for We'll be out there for three weeks. Three weeks in Wales, three weeks in South Africa playing with their squads, playing with teams out there. Um, this rugby shit is, is it's really gonna take off for us. I think it's, it's really gonna be something big, um, something that I feel like a lot of American teams aren't doing right now. And uh, we're gonna try to take full advantage to become better rugby players. Now today's focus of training was more so towards just building 
um, explosiveness from the upper body, building a lot of work around the shoulders. As you've seen, we started out with shoulder presses, uh, push presses. Um, it is a type of shoulder press. Push presses are more for development of the the shoulder explosiveness, right? So we're pushing from our feet. We are using our legs. Um, not everything is a strict press. There's a strict press, military press, push press, right? So we're focusing on push press once again because it develops into athletic performance the best. The reason why is because the movement that you are putting yourself in when it comes to actual on-field work is what's approaching. So you start from your knees, I mean, you start from your feet, pushing up, boom, that push, this simple push right here channels a lot of energy, right? So when we're on the field and we're doing something, we, we first make this movement to go through our ankles, from our ankles to our calves, to our knees, and up, right? That energy channels, that's how we even run. It starts from the feet, channels through, and we use our upper body to carry us through. That's pretty much the same goal with the push press. Now with the push press, we're focusing on 30% of our max push press or military press. Actually, max push press, um, which will be like 315 for me. 315 is probably my max um, push press that I can do. So therefore I'm working around 90 pounds to 100, uh, around that 30, 30% range. And uh, we're gonna do five sets of five. We're focusing on being explosive, being uh, pretty much bringing the speed into the movement. And don't think that having lower weight doesn't make you stronger because the more force you can develop and put your body into, you're going to create strength, a different kind of strength. That explosiveness is gonna help you with those pressing movements. So we're doing this for about five sets of five to start out the workout, getting the heavy stuff out the way. Then we're gonna move on to uh, what I pretty much call, it's, no, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't pretty much call it anything, but it's pretty much push-ups, uh, unilateral push-ups. We're on a BOSU ball, a half BOSU ball, working on our, it's almost like I'm working on a lot of stability on that ball and explosiveness from the outside hand. Almost like I have a ball in my hand and I'm pushing off somebody, a defender, um, that's trying to get me, you know what I'm saying? So it's like a, working on those stiff arms and stuff. So it's building a lot of triceps, chest, and shoulders going from one side to the next. You know, you have to be explosive, you have to use a lot of power to do that. And we did, once again, five sets of 12 reps. And this really will help you develop that outer shell, those shoulders, those triceps, and the chest. So next up, even further developing the shoulders. Once again, a lot of the exercises today are focused around the shoulders and just, you know, around that area pretty much, from shoulders to triceps to chest, um, and a little bit of back action. Um, but what you'll see is that I'm doing a farmer's carry, an overhead farmer's carry. Now, a lot of people probably haven't done it this way, but from my you know, perspective, we always do just like farmer's carry, just front, just going front, turning around, going front again. But a lot of multi-directional movements come into play, especially with the shoulders that really don't, I feel like don't get worked. So I did front all the way back. I, went, I did front um, going uh, starting out, and then I turned laterally, did a lateral shuffle with my with a kettlebell still overhead because now we're working different muscles, different angles in the shoulders as we're walking because the weight is swaying due to your lateral movement. So we did lateral, boom, a few steps, went to the other side, lateral again, a few steps, which is pretty much doing the same thing, but you know, I just, you're still kind of working it in a different way. So the core is being worked differently as you switch sides and do that. Um, actually, no, I take that back, I'm sorry. Only with the, the switch of the arms. Um, and then we walk backwards as well, you know, once again, just to get a little bit more multi-directional uh, shoulder mobility and strengthening um, as we're doing this. Switched arms. I did this for about two sets, right? So down and back, and down and back again. Switch arms, down and back. So it's pretty much four sets all together. Because you do both arms, which is one set, and then two more times, so four. Four uh, down and backs all together. So moving on from that, I kind of went to the bars. I, know, I used to do calisthenics back in the day. I used to do calisthenics back in the day. And with this movement right here, it's literally just a warm up, get the triceps a little bit more warmed up. I just did a static hold on the bars, right? You know, for somebody who doesn't have these bars, you can do the edge of a bench and just lock out for 30 seconds. Boom, boom, just 30 seconds, nice and easy. Then after that, going to the pull up, I just hung there. Once again, for 30 seconds, this is just a warm up for what I'm about to do. And um, pretty much, 
what I feel like with the hanging with the shoulders, it helps loosen a lot of the lats and the shoulders just by hanging there. And it takes a lot out of you, to be honest, just simply hanging. And I feel like it's really helpful with a lot of shoulder mobility issues uh, with myself, just from doing something so simple as hanging from a bar. Now this movement is pretty advanced. Um, what it is, is pretty much you go pull yourself up and you're going side to side 10 times. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten times you go about four sets of this. Um, now I felt that this really helps develop those multi-directional areas in those shoulders and really helps with the mobility and strengthening in certain areas in your shoulders that you don't get to work uh, a lot of the times, especially in those rear delts. So um, this is something that is advanced. Um, Beginners, I honestly wouldn't tell you to do something like this, but for those who have the develop, you know, if you can't do at least 15 to 20 pull-ups, then I suggest you not do this. But if you can, you can definitely give it a shot. And to just like a simply, you know, end the workout, uh, we did pretty much a hundred dips. Now a hundred dips, I tried to keep a lot of focus on my triceps uh, because those triceps, honestly, are gonna really help those shoulders. When it comes to benching, your triceps are gonna help you know, take a lot of load off that front delt, you know what I'm saying? And and your triceps can take a bigger load pretty much than, you know, this these areas. That's why when I bench, I'm right here rather than out here. That's how a lot of people tear. You're so vulnerable out here when you're benching and stuff or pushing rather than being right here, compact and tight where everything needs to be. So I like to work on triceps a lot. And right today, pretty much, we already did some some um, lifting with the weight. We didn't want to go too much, have elbow issues or anything. So we just did body weighted dips for 100 reps to end the workout. All right, guys, thank you for tuning into the video. Once again, like the video, subscribe to the channel. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, please let me know what you guys would like to see. Um, so there are still going to be rugby videos for you guys and um, you know for practice and stuff. And um, just a lot more training of what I'm doing, some conditioning stuff as well. Um, Comment below, you know, if we get over a thousand likes or so, I'll do a Bronco video for you guys to see how fast my Bronco is. Shout out to the rugby squad. Appreciate y'all for tuning in. I'm out.